If you're repeatedly using ChatGPT or another AI to accomplish a specific task, you might often find yourself manually repeating the same steps that burn through API credits or testing and tweaking prompts over and over. It's a frustrating cycle. If you're using multiple models or you need your responses to change based on certain contextual information or dynamic data, that process gets even more complex and time consuming. For example, here I'm using ChatGPT to convert some code from Python to JavaScript. So I provide it the code, I maybe tweak the language a little bit, it generates a response, and then if I want different code, I have to go in and edit this or copy the same information, paste it, and change all of the context. Then I have to manually copy this code over, paste it into my app, uh, maybe make some formatting changes, things like that. Uh, this is the type of process that could vastly be improved by using a prompt management tool. And I'm going to tell you about what those are and how you can get started using them. Aside from improving results, the benefits of these tools include saving money, saving time, customizing results to different users, data, or use cases, keeping up to date with new information, comparing different models, and collaborating with others. In order to solve my own prompt management needs, I started using Formulaic project from Mozilla's Innovation Studio. Formulaic is designed to let you iterate on AI-generated results across different prompts and models simultaneously, so you can instantly compare and improve responses. With built-in support for file uploads, variables, and prompt chaining, it gives you control over dynamic AI outputs in ways ChatGPT can't. Plus, you can integrate all of this directly into your workflows and code base, thanks to its API and Node.js library, which abstract away the complexities of different AI services. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Formulaic to accomplish everything you're doing directly through ChatGPT, but more efficiently and with better results. Now, if you're already familiar with terms like RAG and prompt management, you can feel free to skip forward in the video. I'm gonna start by showing you how to use Formulaic on the web, then I'm gonna show you how to use Formulaic's API and Node library in your own code. Lastly, I'll show you how I'm using Formulaic to replace the OpenAI API in my own app and explain all the reasons why I did that, why it's useful. We'll end by looking at a few Formulaic alternatives. So feel free to skip forward. So let's get started. So if you go to Formulaic and you create an account, set up a username, and then you'll get a default formula that you can start editing. For my formula, Mozilla's got a repo called pdf.js. It's got about 400 contributors, 48,000 stars. So it's a really popular repo and it does a lot of things. So I want to be able to ask questions about it via AI rather than by reading and searching through the documentation. So to start, I'm just going to go to the editor here and I'm going to change this prompt. And these are going to be my instructions. I'm going to give you files and markdown, only give answers based on these files, return a summary, and an excerpt from the file showing the source, the answers in Markdown render it. Here's the question. And so these three brackets here that surround this question are a variable. I'm gonna wanna just add my variable, give it the same name. And if I've created that first, then when I type, it's gonna autocomplete with any variables I've specified. And we don't need this prompt, but if we wanted to add some prompt chaining, that's how we would do that. And actually that can improve your results sometimes is do your instructions in steps versus all in one prompt. And in order to give it some context for what PDF.js can do, I'm going to use this file upload feature and pass in some of the documentation from PDF.js. So I've just got their hello world example here that I'm going to upload. And I've got the README from their repo. So if we go to the repo, this is the README file. And I'm just giving that as context to the AI. So with that done, I can save my formula, Control S. And if I wanted, I could choose the model. Maybe we want to do a few. And then I need to pass it a value for that variable. And that's my question. So let's say my question is, what versions of Firefox support pdf.js. Then I can run that formula and it's gonna give me all of the different answers from the models and I can compare those and see which gave me the best response. And you can see we've got some extra actions here we can take. We could prompt it to try again. We could simplify it, summarize it, etc. Doesn't need to be much more simple than that for me. But one thing we should take a look at is this insights tab. You can see my request here. 
and all the models that it went through. And actually, each one of those has a different token count. Looks like Gemini Flash had the most tokens to generate their response. That means it's going to be more expensive and potentially more time consuming to generate that response. So I might consider using the G GPT-40 mini model for this kind of question. So that's great for a basic overview of prompt evaluation, but what if I want to actually integrate this type of question into the code of an app I'm building? For that, Formulaic provides an API or a Node.js library if you're programming in JavaScript. And if we go to get code, you can see an example of how to use the API in various languages. So we've got a JavaScript example here. We've got Python or curl if we just want to test from the command line. Now we're going to actually use the Node.js library, but while we're looking at this code, I want to point out a few things. One is that you'll need an API key, so you'll go to your account to get that API key, and if I'm generating my first one here. The second thing is that uh, you can pass the models you want to test with in this array here. So we've got GPT-40 mini in the example, but obviously if we wanted to test more of these, we would need to pass each of those models in the array pass our variables. And then there's this concept of artifacts. And what this does is, if you've used AI, you know it doesn't always give the same response to the same question. But by referencing a specific artifact from formulaic, you actually can get that same response if you liked a particular way that the AI you chose answered a question. And you can use that as a basis for follow-up question by passing it as context in code for those follow-up questions. Super important concept, we'll get into it in a bit, but remember that formulaic supports artifacts. So let's just do a quick hello world with the node library. This is the GitHub repo for it. They've made it available as an NPM package. So I'm opening up VS Code. I'm gonna make a new folder and make an index file. Now you can just open up a terminal window where this index file is located and do NPM I formulaic node for stuff. So now let's just take a look at their usage examples here. We've got a bunch of different examples of things that we can do. Let us copy this code and we'll edit it. I'm going to paste in my API key. And again, in formulaic, you go to your profile to generate one of those and make sure to copy it and write it down somewhere because you can't access it again. So I will paste that in. And now I'm just hiding that line so you don't see my API key but we've instantiated formulaic with our API key, and now we can call any of the methods within that node library. So this one is getting the available models that formulaic supports. We don't really need that. We can get information about a particular formula ID. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And for now, I'm just gonna strip out uh, some of this other stuff. And to get our formula ID, we're gonna head back over to formulaic We'll go to our formulas, and you can see we've got this recipe ID in the code here. It's also here up in the URL. So I can take that and paste this where it says your formula ID. And now if we run this script, you can see we've got some output here with the information for our formula. What I want to do is create a completion or an AI response. So I'm gonna copy this code, paste that in, and go ahead and get rid of this. I'll just say GPT. Or O, our variable was called question. And the value is. And we will need that formula ID again because it gets passed in here and the create completion. Now we should have what we need to run that command again. And we got a result. It passes us back a message array, a model array and some statistics about what it took to generate. And we get some details on that. We want to see what these messages are. So let's modify console log. So we want the completion zero chat the messages. Let's start there. Let's see what it gives us. So we've got our user instructions and this is what we had put into that template. And then the assistant is responding back and saying the supported version of Firefox for PDF.js is version 19 and above. So we know it's working the same way that it was in the web app. That's all well and good, but how would we use this practically? This is an extension we're building 
for the Innovation Studio or VS Code. And the idea here is that you can highlight a line of code, you can ask a question about it, and it will go off and return answers for AI via web search and suggest some colleagues that you can also reach out to. So these are some of my colleagues who specialize in ML engineering. If we look at that AI response, we see that it's suggesting a Python package that calculates birth score for you. And this is all using formulaic behind the scenes. So let me show you how I set that up. These are some of my formulas. Code questions and contributor finder are formulas I'm using in this VS Code extension. So this one here, which is responsible for answering your code questions is actually pretty simple. I've got three variables, one for the remote URL, which points to the GitHub repo for this code base, the current file that the user is on, and the question that they ask within the extension. In the prompt, I'm referencing those variables. I tell the AI, your job is to answer developers' code questions from the repo as well as your existing knowledge. The developer asked this question about this file in this GitHub URL. Respond briefly and provide links that might help. We go back to that. I was in this Lumigator file from this GitHub repo. This was my question. So you can see if I ask a different question or if I'm in a different repo or file, we can support multiple users with multiple questions. Now, I could do this with OpenAI's API. And in fact, that's how I started this. So what you're looking at here is a branch of my source code where I'm actually using OpenAI to do this. I've got all of the stuff that I would normally just put into formulaic here in my code. You're a coding assistant whose job is to help match developers' code questions, et cetera, et cetera. I'm having to pass in and stringify the variables, writing it this template, and I populate that template with variables from the source code. Now there's a few drawbacks with this. One, as I mentioned, you've got to do things like stringify and make it safe to transport over the web. Two, there's just a lot more stuff happening in your code that's distracting from the other functional bits of what you're trying to do. You don't necessarily want to have this template here in your code. If you're using a web service like Formulaic, you can put all that stuff there. It's separate, it's much more readable, it can be editable by a non-coder, etc. Now, when I actually ask this question, I'm also having to include a bunch of boilerplate to retrieve this response. I'm having to pass in my OpenAI key, and I have to worry about keeping that safe so people don't get it. I can only support one model. I need to pass the system message as well as the user message, and then retrieve this response and abstract that. Formulaic makes this way easier. If we look at this again, as I mentioned, anybody can edit this. Multiple people can collaborate on it. If I want to test it out, I can actually just test it out here in the chat interface. I don't have to fire up my app, run all the processes that that app depends on, and go to the place in the interface where I ask the question. If I were to change any of that stuff in this code here, I would actually have to modify it here, make a GitHub commit, push that code, do a pull request, get it approved, build my app. I might have some continuous integration processes or tests that were running that it would have to clear, and then compile the app and distribute the extension to anybody who was testing it huge pain and something that can be done with formulaic behind the scenes without having to change anything in my code. So let's just run a test. How do I create a ground truth reference for calculating birth score? And so we can test how this works. If we need to, we can modify that prompt here and nothing changes in our code. Through this process, we can work to get the best responses from the AI quickly and with minimal interference. So now I'm going to show you the code where I'm using formulaic instead of open AI. All I'm doing is saying, create chat completion, passing it the ID, and passing it the messages that it needs to answer my question. It's gonna come back with a response, and I just grab that content and print it out on the screen. Now, the colleague connect piece of my extension is a little more involved because it needs to know a little bit about the org chart for Mozilla and who has expertise in what capacities. So let's look at the formulaic formula for that and see how that's handled. So this is my contributor finder formula. I've got some very similar instructions, but here I'm saying I'd like you to make three suggestions of people from the org chart based on these criteria, geographic location, level experience, job title, team relevance, et cetera, and provide a rationale for why you made each choice. Now. Here, I'm using some prompt chaining. This first bit is about how it should respond. This next prompt is what format I want it to respond in. And by putting it in this second prompt, it actually helps to ensure the response will come back to me in JSON with this structure. In my extension, 
I'm making sure these colleagues follow the same format. They have a name, they have their title, their location, the email address, and that's that format that I'm giving here. Now, maybe the best benefit of formulaic is that it allows you to upload these files. I mentioned at the start of this video, a process called RAG or retrieval augmented generation. That's what this is. It's providing additional context to a pre-trained model so that it can give you better responses. Now, OpenAI is trained on a lot of data, but I'm pretty sure it hasn't trained on Mozilla's private company directory. Without this data, AI could not answer my question about who to reach out to within my company. Formulaic makes this look easy, but behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. I've actually implemented the code to do this sort of thing on my own, and it's not trivial. You have to take the data that someone is providing, in this case, our org chart, ingest it, chunk it, embed it, store those vector embeddings, receive the question, get the embeddings for that question, pass it to the document store, retrieve the relevant chunks, figure out which chunks best answer the user's question, pass those back to the LLM, and provide the answer. If you're trying to do this in an enterprise context, you can run into all sorts of potential failure points, which are outlined in this diagram here. For this prototype that I'm building, I'm happy to let someone else deal with all of that complexity. So that's a glimpse of how I'm using Formulaic. They've got all sorts of walkthroughs and documentation on their website to get you started. They even can show you how to use Llama file from Mozilla to do local inference so you don't have to send any of that data to the cloud. I'd encourage you to check it out for yourself if you're building an AI app or you just have repetitive tests that you would normally be doing with ChatGPT. Now there's lots of other services out there that do this sort of thing. I've found that a lot of them are really geared towards engineers. Their interfaces aren't necessarily as easy to understand and navigate, but feel free to check these other alternatives out. I'll provide a list in the video description. One reason you may want to consider Formulaic in the short term is that they aren't requiring your own API keys for all of these services. They support these models out of the box and they are handling all of the inference costs on their end. I don't know how long that will continue, but for now, it's free. That's all for this video. Feel free to reach out with any questions you have. Otherwise, good luck and stay tuned for more AI tutorials.